after what was truly an amazing early access period in which we shot some of the coolest trophies that Emerald Coast has to offer, it's time to start hunting for trophies that we can actually keep. And if you didn't see, in our first hunt that we live streamed on release day yesterday, we actually shot a leucistic kangaroo, which was pretty cool. About 300 meters. We'll see how the varminter does on a roo at that range. Oh, heart shot him. Ooh, 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 that's a rare. Isn't it? That's a leucistic or something. Sit still. Heart shot that one as well. That's something. Definitely got some white like around the neck there. That's a leucistic. Boy, you can't even tell in the harvest screen. I could tell from 200 meters away. Whatever it was. 213. Right through the heart with the varminter. And so far to this point, that's been the only real trophy here on the Emerald Coast. We did have a troll crocodile, but trolls on the Emerald Coast are not exactly something new. We expected that would happen. And speaking of crocodiles, it looks like that'll be what we're starting our hunt here with. Now, on that live stream, what I was essentially trying to do was get all the way up into the Ruby Coast area of the Northeast. We didn't make it all the way up. We kind of got stuck shooting a bunch of crocs in the swamps. So that's what we're going to try to pick up where we left off, go up into that area and probably do some Bantang hunting. And depending on how long that take and how many distractions we run into along the way, we'll see where we go from there. There is another croc though, max system at level seven. Having been trolled twice now, once in early access and once in the live game, I think we're gonna kill basically everyone we can. We want as many respawns as we can get so that hopefully one of them comes back as a nine that actually does make diamond. And really, it's not only that, the rares that I've seen posted around the community for the crocodiles are so amazing. Again, every time that we shoot one and get a respawn, we've got a chance of one of those incredible rares popping up. And as I just said earlier, from here on out, anything we get, we actually get to keep in our trophy lodge. So as for our max estimate seven, an 871 score is not too bad. And I think we'll go ahead and cross over here so we don't get stuck hunting crocs for like a half hour and start to work our way a little bit north of us. Man, there's a mythical in here too though. I literally just said, gonna try not to get stuck hunting crocs and we're semi getting stuck hunting crocs. Did either of those shots hit? I guess they did. Don't know where he's trying to get to and another one headed out there unless that's something significant. Oh my goodness. Well, that's got a pretty good chance of being a diamond. So I don't know what crocs do yet. Do we just come back? Do we wait here? Why did we have to shoot the mythical? If we had just been ready and ignored it and spotted that, he was pretty well broadside, though maybe not a shot we should have taken. I legitimately don't know what to do. If it were gators, probably the way to go is either just wait it out or reset the time. Probably his zone is nearby, but do we know that for sure? Not really. I think we'll stay here and just kind of sit where we can see. How was there a 7, 8, and 9, all obviously max weight estimate, in this one spot? And we just kept going further up on stream. We'd have had two legendaries in a matter of, I don't know, two or three kilometers? The first was right in here somewhere. Oh, no way. What is going on? A level 5 magpie? We're potentially going to spook our croc under the water, but I kind of am more concerned about that. I would love to get that, but it's, if we had the Virant and we had the 10 shots, that would probably help our case. Which one was he? That's him. That is getting so far. I don't even necessarily want to hit him at that range because we had one on stream that we actually hit and then it went into that like migrating mode where you can't spot them. Okay. We're going to have to go and get a setup. And maybe set up, like, out away from the water a bit, because the crocs will spook them. But yet we gotta be somewhere where we can see if that croc is coming back. What in the world is happening in this spot? So hopefully our croc is still around, because we had to leave the area and go and get our setup. And I didn't fast travel, I thought that might be better. But the last place we saw him was right down in there. So I went with the tripod only because it gives us the chance to be elevated and potentially see him a little bit easier as we wait. And in the meantime, hopefully that flock of magpie geese comes back. We know they were going kind of east, so we got to set up somewhere else we can, but I'd like to think they'll pass back through here. 
So perhaps the most interesting thing, the Magpie Geese do not seem to be alerted as if there's a croc around at all. So maybe in the process of going and getting our goose set up, the croc just left. So we may have to go and try to find him, but there was that level four there. We might as well try to get both of those males if we can. I think they're actually kind of like separate spawns. I'm not going to go too heavy with the hunting pressure here, because if we kill a bunch, we could actually mess things up for... Okay. They just despawn? Good to know. We're going to be really careful with that level 5 if it shows back up. But, yeah, I got to think. That croc is probably out of there. And as far as the level 5 magpie goes, that's a good thing. It shouldn't just get halfway here and just take off. But got an orange plumage type female, or level 1 male, which is an orange. And also orange, that level 4, which is pretty solid, at 3.49. But just gotta hope eventually the flock with the 5 comes back. And in the meantime, we'll be scanning for that legendary croc. Because even though I don't think he's around at the moment, I doubt he's gone all that far. Our legendary is way out there, like almost 200 meters away. He's kind of sneaking towards the water. But if we can get an opening, we might be able to sneak a shot in there before he gets like into too deep a water, this could work. It's about 160 meters. Maybe we can just make this a little bit better. I hear magpie geese too, but there's a spot right here. I think we can do it. Try to get that in that feels like it's gonna be a vital hit. It's gotta be. Get one more there for good measure. I think we hit him. And maybe it was just the one goose. In which case we didn't need to be, oh, there were definitely more. What are the odds? that that could have been in the flock with the level 5. Looks like we lucked out and it wasn't, but did we get the croc? I think I'm looking the wrong way. Before we get to find out, got an aggressive level 5 croc. Remember I said we were going to go north minus however many distractions we get? I don't know if we're going to make it at all north. By the way, that did not get the 5. Our 9 is dead and he was up this way. It took a while, but remember, it is the 7 mil. And I'm not so sure that second shot was a lung. It may have been too far forward. I think the first one should have got him good, though. He's literally right there where we shot him, but he could have been hung up on the mangrove roots or maybe just got way out into the water and floated back. Either way, his estimate was up to like 1156. 1100 is max score, so he could be literally anywhere from troll to absolute max. Fingers crossed for this one. Oh, it's still a troll at 1002. An amazing estimate. And he's still just shy. That weight for sure could have been a diamond. That's insane. Gray variation as well, which is... I like that one a lot. I think Dark Brown's my favorite outside of the rares. But gray would have been one I'd love to have gotten. I would not be the least bit shocked if while we're away from our setup, if that 5 came back through. Don't see him in there. So, 0 for 1 on the max levels in this spot and over two now on legendary crocs but maybe it still led us to something that certainly could be a more difficult uh grind for diamonds and sounds like we have them all over the place here again finally we've got our level five goose this is why it's so important to pay attention to what direction a flock is going now as i've been sitting here some geese have actually circled and landed some have taken off we want him to land only because that's an easier to make shot with the 16 gauge as he's coming down to land. But if he goes to take off, we absolutely have to get him. And I'll explain the direction thing in a minute. But I want to keep calling, keep them circling as close to the blind as possible. There's definitely crocs to our east, so we don't want him going over there. Everything else, I think is pretty safe for them to do. I can't believe we finally found him though. It was such a long time. It's been like an hour. This is what we're looking for, though, so that one's going to go and land. The five, I think, is the next one back. Should be that guy there. I'd love to get him out of the air, but I don't know that that's necessarily going to work. Definitely hit him. I think we got him twice. I was afraid he was going to take off, and I didn't know if we could get the shot through there with the 22. I really hope that guy makes it. Of all the potential diamonds out here on the Emerald Coast for new species... After everything we went through on the Reventulicos single player only diamonds challenge, trying to get a diamond gray leg and bean goose, if this makes it, 
I just think it's going to make our time here on Emerald Coast that much better. I don't even know how to get over there. I am just unnecessarily, like, nervous and flustered. The whole level 9 croc and level 5 magpie and taking forever to get either one of them. I feel like we could have done better in getting him, but at least he's down. Got a Rusadir up there, which maybe one day we can focus on things other than two specific animals that we spotted today. Definitely got the correct goose because he is still highlighted. I think they're the same as Greylag's when he 3.85 for Diamond. And that is a 3.95. So, first shot would have been enough. We actually hit him in the leg, the wing. Hit him with, I don't know if it says how many pellets anymore. He was pretty far away, 76 meters. Second shot was not too bad either. Got him in the neck. But, that is one that I thought could be a real challenge. And is completely out of the way now with a pretty big one. I think 4 flat is max. Maybe 3.15 or 3.2 kilo then would be the max weight. Pretty darn cool. And it all came from, you know, going to a spot we were trying to get for Bantag. Shooting the wrong croc. Letting one run past. And as we're waiting for him to show up, a level 5 goose shows up. That is just insane. So one thing I don't remember doing in early access was checking some of these lakes in the northeast area for hog deer. We shot a fair number of hog deer up here, but never actually in their drink zones. And I also realized I never explained the whole, like, paying attention to the direction that a flock flies in. So if we can make this shot, as we go down to claim them, I'll try to talk about what I meant by that. So where we were set up initially waiting for the level 9 croc to come back was right down in here. We spotted the level 5 and his flock flying in this general direction, and you can see where we set up and actually ended up taking them. It's where you first spot a goose is always a decent place to set up for them, but a lot of times it's actually where they're headed where you'll end up encountering it. We sat there for almost an hour, never had the level 5 come back to where we first saw it, and then within probably 20 minutes of setting up in the other area, he shows up and we're able to take him out. Now, one thing that certainly helps is the fact that magpie geese are kind of specific to the swamps. Like, I don't think you get them along the creeks or rivers and stuff, so it's really only in these areas where they can show up. So the first spot kind of in that direction is where we set up, and obviously he showed up there. But as for our hog deer, an 86 score, not too bad. That first shot was a bit far back, so wanted to get a follow-up, and actually, it wouldn't help us anyway. But yeah, if you're curious what I was talking about as far as paying attention to the direction of a flock when there's a goose that you want to set up on or a goose that you miss and have to go and find, that can be really important in actually finding it. It seems like a lot of times they really do show up in the direction that they were headed, more so than where you first spot them. Well, that might be a hollow shamer. I don't think we've seen a sandbar that small yet. Looks to me to be just a spike, actually, and it's a level 2, so... Maybe level 1 sandbar aren't a thing. I think that estimate was 240 to 270, and we do know for sure with sandbar and really most of the new species on this map, they've only got one or two weight ranges. So if he's anywhere near that 240 mark, that's probably about as low as they get, and I really just can't see them getting much smaller. He does have little brow tines, so perhaps not a bronze, but I gotta expect it. 57 score, he's actually 257 kilos, so they may be able to get a good bit smaller, but... We'll go ahead and tax that for Hall of Shame. New species and new Hall of Shamers definitely will kind of expand that lodge a little bit. And that, I think, is the white fur type on a pretty decent fallow buck. He's got a kind of unique rack, too. I've definitely noticed here already the fallow antlers have gotten a little bit of love. They've maybe added some variations or something in that, like, 220 to 250 range. In the past, you basically got... 220s or 260s. If you got one in the 230s or 250s, it was just a wildly uneven or super wide rack. Now, it seems like 230s and 240s are going to be more common, and that kind of helps to bridge that gap between kind of a decent gold and a diamond. Now, this particular one may end up being in the 220s just because he's so narrow, but you really wouldn't see them like this before. He's actually 209, even lower than that. Super, super narrow, though. Kind of unique. I'm hoping to see, like, way more diamond combinations. And I've already seen posted around the community some level 5s that made diamond that are in the 250s. I'm really happy to see that because much like you had that huge gap, it was either 220 or 260 for diamond. Basically, every diamond 
looked more or less exactly the same, whether it was a low 260 or a high 260. Really only in the 270s was there anything notable, and it was just a little bit of extra overall spread. So our hog deer ventures really have not produced all that much. Got a level three and an even not max weight estimate level three at this particular lake. And this is the farthest north one. So I think we're gonna go ahead and take this guy. And then I wanna get at least one Bantang on this hunt. And I've been thinking about the magpie goose and what we're gonna do with it. I think it's probably about time to kind of change up some of the multi mounts we have in our lodge. And the one with the magpie and the saltwater croc is really good. So probably we'll go and get a male crocodile just to put in the multi mount for now. And hopefully wrap this up. So we'll try to head north. There should be crocs all the way along here. And ideally we could just run into a bantang or two along the way. And if this video seems like an absolute mess, I feel like it kind of has been. It's been two hours now and we've made it all of about three kilometers. We spent most of our time sitting in one spot waiting for that goose and croc to come back. So it's completely derailed the entire initial plan, but that's the thing that really we set out to do. As much as it's nice to have a plan and get as much of the map unlocked, the real hope is that we find something good enough that actually does derail our plans. And when at least one of the two max levels made diamond, especially on this map with so many trolls, we can't complain about that. No way, that's gonna be a guaranteed troll, but we have a level five Rusa now? I was just looking at one in the official The Hunter Discord, like a big diamond, and they look incredible. And for just a second, I thought we were gonna luck into something like that, but he maxed at 138, diamond is 148, so he's nowhere close, and I feel like that's my fault for <laughs> jinxing it and saying something about this map having a lot of trolls. We are now one for three, because there is no doubt that guy's a troll, and even at that, they look really good. But if you guys have not seen the diamonds, the tines are just so much more impressive even than this. Kind of a wonky one too, which is cool. I don't think we've seen that yet. White brown as well, one of my definite favorite furs. 12 shy of diamond. Who would have thought? Still no Bantang. And we're actually down here to the swamps. I want to make sure we get one. So I guess we'll maybe go for a croc first since we're here and then go back for Bantang. That'll work though. Got an aggressive level 7 croc though. I don't actually know what it's doing. If it works its way over here. That'll be a vital hit. Plus one to maybe get it down a little bit quicker. And I actually don't know what the crocs. I think level 7s are guaranteed golds for them. Kangaroos, that's definitely not the case. And all these new species with trolls everywhere and stuff. It's kind of hard to keep track of what's what. But I don't think I've seen a level 7 croc end up as a silver just yet. And really either way, it's just as a placeholder. That one is a gold at 809, and gold is 760, so we'll tax that for now. I kinda wish that I would've taxed the troll from earlier, or even the troll from the stream. But the one earlier with the level five magpie, I wasn't worried about anything like that. But let's kinda go up in here. I think it, maybe it's right here at the end of this road. There's an outpost not too far from here, and I'd like to go ahead and unlock that anyway. And typically right by that outpost, there are some Bantang zones. So Maybe that'll work out. We got an aggressive six and a calm six. I wonder if he's just gonna stand there. Something I want to do, and unfortunately we didn't do it there, is when they stand there with their jaw open, make that shot kind of like through the roof of the mouth and into the brain. I don't actually know if it's possible, but I feel like maybe it could be if you get it just right. And actually we did get him, which probably means he's gonna float all the way over here. So just to see, uh, at least with that amount of penetration, if the harvest screen's correct, probably not possible. And I think we're more or less lined up correctly. The brain is right there. I don't know, maybe the 300 or something could do it. it it's something to definitely mess around with. But for now, let's go and see if we can get that outpost and hopefully find a Bantang. And finally, our first Bantang of the hunt, it only took a little over two hours and 15 minutes, but a level three, and we'll go up there and make sure there's not a better one there. That maiden call is definitely not from the same place, so there's gonna be more males. And there's even more down to the left. There's an okay size four, another decent three. We're definitely gonna have our pick of decent ones. If we get into the right location and are careful about our shooting, 
probably we can get two. And I think that's going to be the one that called. So that three is better. Let's go ahead and take that from here. Thought about going for a heart shot, but probably lungs is best. Plus he's going to go aggressive. So anytime it takes to bleed out, he'll just start to move this way. And then these ones, wherever they were at, they've heard that, but they're not going to spook. So I thought there was a level four. That's him right there. I think he's maybe that brown variant that looks really, really nice. Get that shot while he walks through the opening. And now all that's left is to claim a couple of aggressive Bantang that should, at least a little bit, help us on track. And that guy never made it very far. But our level three was a black variant and a 122 score. I wouldn't mind if their scoring was adjusted just a little bit, because I feel like every level three is like a decent gold. That said, from what I've seen of the fives and like even higher scoring ones than the level five that we shot in the Untamed Species uh, video on the Expansive Worlds channel, the big ones do look really nice and I don't mind that they seem to make diamond a little bit more easily than, you know, things like Crocs and Rusadir that tend to troll us. But finally, our last kill of the hunt is in fact the dark brown variant. Now I'm confused, I think brown is the one that I'm talking about still. It looks a little bit different, but even this one does look quite nice. Right around the same score as the level 3. And this is a smaller 4. But anyway, it is finally time to go back to the Trophy Lodge. And gonna be making one of the more major changes to the Lodge. Taking down a Lion Multi Mount and putting up the Croc and Magpie Mount. And, despite the placeholder, I think this is gonna be a pretty cool addition to this chunk of the Lodge. We've got a Lion Multi Mount already with the Breadwinner and the Cape Buffalo. And again, if we could ever get terrain customization to do water for this mount, this is 100% what I would do. But there is one where he's kind of like curled around. That's what I'm talking about. And I think the biggest reason I want to do that is it really shows off the size of the Crocs. Like, he's still halfway on the ground. And he's taller than a Plains Bison standing there. I think that gives a good idea of just how big they are. And our Diamond Magpie Goose is still somehow able to escape that, which I think is cool actually. There isn't any poses where the Croc actually has the Magpie, where in this case, when we have a Diamond Magpie Goose and not a Diamond Croc, I would say we want the Magpie to be actually escaping, but pretty cool to get that. I will be really intrigued to see, watching throughout the community in the coming weeks, if the Magpie Geese are anywhere near as rare as the Greylag and Tundra Bean Geese from Reventuli. But I definitely think in getting that, that's going to help us a lot in our quest to, once again, try to get every diamond in the game with all these new ones on the Emerald Coast. But we didn't quite accomplish what we set out to do today. We didn't get nearly as far in terms of unlocking things. That diamond, though, definitely makes it all worth it. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.